let's drill it down to the individual stocks then. Let's find out what's moving and shaking this Friday afternoon. Uh, our entire research team is here, but let's start with Mangalam, and he's going to tell us what's ailing Kansai and Nerolak. The auto sector, which is ailing Kansai and Nerolak, Rima, you know, over the last couple of days, we've heard that auto demand is not doing too well. In fact, there were reports that Maruti has cut their production by 25% in March. So it does not only ail uh, the auto stocks, also the auto ancillary stocks, and uh, Kansai and Nerolak is one of them with regards to the fact that nearly 45% of their revenues come in from the industrial business and of which majority of the revenues come in from the autos business. So CLSA has uh, downgraded the stock and uh, uh, they've cut their target price also on that. Uh, reports of Maruti cutting down their uh, production does not bode well for Kansai Nerula given that nearly a third of its revenues come in from the auto sector and the company has 60% leadership in uh, uh, the auto paints segment which, uh, which will get impacted as the demand for auto declines. While they maintained their growth estimates on the decorative business, there is a risk to the margins given that we've seen crude oil prices move by about 28% from the start of this year and more so for Kansai than any other paint companies given its high dependence on industrial business and low tenacity of the Indian industrial business to go ahead and uh, give, pass on those price hikes. So they've retained their, uh, uh, they've, they've cut their uh, targets and uh, uh, they've uh, also cut their EPS estimates by 2 to 4 percent. So the target price now stands at around 385 rupees. Okay, all right. Thanks so much for that, Mangalam. Well, uh, JMR Infra, there's been some positive news that came in on uh, Wednesday post-market. Nimesh is with us to run us through uh, that piece of analysis. Uh, Nimesh? Hi, Nigel. So, you know, uh, they, they made an announcement uh, on Wednesday post-markets that Dial, which is the authority for, for Delhi Airport, uh, they have awarded the commercial development rights to Bharti Reality for Aero City. Now, that's the 23 acres of land which was uh, signed an MOU with, with Bharti Reality for, for the development. And now, finally, the, 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 the approvals have come uh, to develop the same. So, the par as part of the deal, uh, it, it will be in two phases. In the first phase, four and a half, four and a half lakh square feet, and in the second phase, four and a half lakh square feet. Now, uh, the, the, the agreement, uh, you know, the value for this is, is, is that uh, upfront they will get uh, 1830, 1840 crores uh, approximately as, as the upfront payment and 363 crores as an annual rent for, 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 for 30 years and then it will be, it will be uh, renegotiated for another 30 years. So it's a 60 year lease which, uh, which Dial uh, has given to, uh, to, to Bharti Reality for the development. Uh, so this is, a, this is a second tranche which, which, is, getting, uh, which is getting commercialized uh, as far as the GMR uh, you know, land is concerned. Uh, after this, they will be holding on another 167 acres of land uh, to, to be monetized in future. I was looking at a GMR note this morning and they said that the land monetization is at a higher price than what they, what, what they did last time. They maintain an outperformance with a target price of around 23 rupees and they feel the, 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 the price at which this monetization is done, the future land monetization will happen at a higher price. So the, the overall value for the company improves after this deal at, uh, at, at, at the price which has been done with, with Bharti Reality. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks so much for that, Namesh. Well, uh, Reema, we had some telecom data that came in earlier as well. What's the reading? Uh, TRI has released the January subscriber data for the telecom operators. The two key takeaways, one, if you look at the broadband customers, which are largely your data customers there, Bharti Airtel has added more broadband subscribers than Reliance Geo in January of 2019. And this is for the first time ever. They've added 10 million subscribers in the month of January, which would compare with a monthly run rate of three, four million dollars in the prior quarter. Now, broad broadband customers are important because they are largely your data customers customers and that's where the money comes in. So they generate higher revenues for the company vis-a-vis -vis the voice customers which are largely free and that is in lakhs so which basically means like 10 million has roughly been added in the month of January. A big pickup. The question is, is it sustainable and what led to it? If you look at the overall subscriber edition there Reliance Geo has the lead. So Reliance Geo continues to see that momentum. They've added nearly 93 lakh subscribers in the month of January. 56% of the incremental subscriber ads. Uh, breaking down a little further, Vodafone Idea has actually seen a decline of 35 million, uh, 35 lakh subscribers in the month of Reliance, uh, in the month of uh, January, while Bharti Airtel is largely on the flatter side. The active subscriber base of uh, Vodafone Idea and Bharti Airtel however have declined and that is because these companies have been implementing the minimum uh, monthly 
you know, paid plan. So they're weeding out some of these inactive subscribers, so which is why their active subscriber base has come down on a month-on-month -month basis. But that that it's positive that Bharti Airtel has seen a big jump in its broadband customers. Let's see if it's sustainable. But on an overall basis, Reliance Geo continues to have a lead. A quick uh, disclosure, uh, Reliance Geo is owned by Reliance Industries, which is the owner of the channel that you're watching. Okay, all right, Rima, thanks so much for that. Well, let's hop across to Sonal. She's joining us to tell us uh, there's uh, some good news that's come in for Kaveri Seeds, isn't it? Absolutely, Nigel. Well, the Andhra Pradesh government has reinstated the license with respect to HT cotton seeds for Kaveri seeds. Just to give you a background, back in February, the Andhra Pradesh government has suspended the licenses of around 13 companies, including Kaveri seeds, because they did not meet the specifications as per the seed association. So they had suspended uh, these HT cotton seed licenses, and the overall contribution to revenues was around 5% from this particular seeds. So now this has been reinstated, except for one of the variety, uh, that is the uh, cotton hybrid Ankur and this particular variety contributed around 15 lakhs to the total revenues. However, the company says that they do not make any such sales from this particular variety in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Now the management has told CNBC TV 18 that license for AP has been reinstated. It contributed less than 5% of the total revenues. So this definitely is a positive coming in. But now the stock has flattened because it's just less than 5% of the total revenue. So it's not such a big impact also. But nevertheless, a positive development. Well, uh, Sonal, when the license was uh, taken away at that point of time uh, they had not informed the exchanges right exactly. this time so, around did they uh, inform it they haven't informed the exchanges actually it is a reply to the query that CNBC TV 18 wrote to them and they have replied to that and back in February when they had not informed the exchanges and despite the fact that it's only 5% of the total revenues the, sh uh, the stock price that saw a sharp downtick because it was against the corporate governance uh, norms right they should have informed the exchanges and now again they have not informed the exchanges it's just a reply to the query that they have made Thank you very much uh, for that. Let's move on and talk about the aviation stocks. The air passenger traffic growth in the month of February has slowed to a five-year low. Sonia joins in with the details. Sonia? Well, yes, it's the second straight month of a single-digit uh, growth in the passenger traffic number. So in the month of February, it's just a 5.6% growth compared to a 9.1% growth that we saw in January. And before that, it was on an average of around 15-20% to 20 growth that we saw for the past many months. So yes, this is a five year low. Now, uh, you know, the market share of Jet Airways has fallen, of course, because they've grounded so much of their fleet. The market share is now down to 11.4% versus 13.6% last month. And this has benefited the likes of SpiceJet and Interglobe Aviation. SpiceJet's market share has risen to about 13.7% in February. Indigo continues to be a market leader at about 43.4% in the month of February. Now, brokerages have written on the slowdown that we've seen. HSBC says the domestic traffic growth is at its lowest in the last five years because fares have moved north. There's been a sudden escalation of fares because of jet grounding its fleet. And uh, that really has caused the load factors to also move lower despite capacity growth slowing to 8%. They have a hold rating on SpiceJet with a target price of 79.50 and a reduced rating on Jet Airways with a target price of 190. In addition to all of this, you know, there are news reports suggesting that the government has offered SpiceJet jet Airways grounded planes, uh, they may acquire as many as 40 of Jet Airways grounded planes. Now remember, Ajay Singh was instrumental in the turnaround of Spice Jet. Since there is a possibility of him being roped in for the turnaround of Jet Airways as well, uh, you know, some of these stocks are uh, quite upbeat. But of course, all of these rumors uh, have not been confirmed. Back to you. Okay, all right, Sonia. Thanks so much for that. Finally, let's hop across to uh, Nupur. She's going to tell us all the stocks and the news today. Nupur? Uh, Nigel, uh, yes, few stocks which are buzzing in trade. RAC and PFC, they have received a final note to buy government stake in RAC at rupees 139 per share for the value, which is valued at 14,500 crores. Moving on to Tata Power, they have received a contract from Minister of Defence worth rupees 1,200 crores, which is also seeing a green tick in the trade today. Uh, from the brokerages, ICC Pru uh, is buzzing that CA CLS has raised the target from 450 to 430, uh, uh, from 430 to 450 per share. They, but they have said that risk will be there and related to the competition and from the regulatory tightening. Uh, moving on to the uh, LNT, where Nomura has written a report and the stock is up almost three to three percent. The estimate that the mine tree deal would be slightly EPS diluted and neutral in FI20. Estimate deal to be EPS accurate in FI21, and LNT could still announce a special dividend on. Red 
मोबिलाइजेशन ऑफ वन फोर्टी बिलियन रुपीज इज प्रोसीड फ्रॉम सेल ऑफ इस इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड ऑटोमेशन बिजनेस बाय द एंड ऑफ एफ आई ट्वेंटी दस द अदर स्टॉक्स विच आर बजिंग इन ट्रेड टूडे स्पेशली द शुगर स्टॉक विच इंक्लूड द बलरामपुर धामपुर एंड द्वारकेश बैक टू यू Thank you, Anupur, for that. A quick recap then of the top passing stocks. This are Bharti Airtel, Vodafone Idea, Kansa and Aerolag, GMR Infra, Kaveri Seeds, the aviation stocks, Jet, SpiceJet and Interglobe Aviation, PFC, Tata Power, ICSA Pro, L&T, Barampur, Chini, the other sugar stocks like Dhampur and Varike Sugar as well. Um, get into a break then. On the other side, we've been telling you how the auto sector is in a slowdown mode. Will the slowdown in auto sales impact the auto financiers as well? We'll ask the management of Muthur Capital on the other side.